Hello YouTube, TBT here. So in part one of our two part video, we went about setting up a VPN server using a Raspberry Pi, Diet Pi, and a program called StrongSwan. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up a VPN configuration file for Apple devices. Now to begin, create a new profile using Apple Configurator. We're going to do two things in the general section. One is we're going to name our VPN, personal VPN. And two, we're going to type com.strongswan.vpn inside the identifier. Next, select the Certificates tab on the left side of the profile window. Now, if you've been following this tutorial from part one, we're gonna take the client.p12 file that we previously stored on our flash drive and insert it into this profile. Once you've inserted the client file, enter the password that is associated with the client file below. Keep in mind that by entering the password now, you won't be prompted to enter this password when you install the profile onto another device. However, if you don't enter the password here, you will be prompted to do so when you install the config file onto a client device. Next, select the VPN tab on the left side of the profile window. Once you're in, we're going to do the following. First, set a connection name. In my case, I'm going to type personal VPN. Change connection type to IKE v2. Select the checkbox to send all traffic through VPN. We're going to type the public IP address of our home network into server and remote identifier. For local identifier, we're going to type client underscore key, which is the name we assigned to the client.p12 file when we created it in part one of our tutorial. For machine authentication, set it to certificate. For identity certificate, set it to client.p12. For certificate type, set it to ECDSA256. Now at this point, we're going to skip over server certificate and head down to select enable perfect forward secrecy. Next, we're going to set the IKE and child SA parameters based on the parameters set in part one of our tutorial. So for both parameters, set the following. Set encryption algorithm to AES-128. Set the integrity algorithm to SHA-2-256. And set the Diffie-Hellman group to 19. At this point, we're almost done setting up the configuration file. So just double check your work and make sure it's the same as what's on screen. Now at this point, we're going to save and close the config file. Before installing on any client device, we're going to add one more feature to this profile, known as Connect On Demand or Always On VPN. Next, we're going to right click the config file and open it using text edit. Now from here, we're gonna find the client underscore key string. Once you've done so, hit enter, and then copy and paste the code I have posted below this video, underneath the labeling, connect on demand. Once you've done so, save and exit. And now, you're ready to test your MAT experiment. This first test is for all the MacBook users out there. 
simply double click the config file and authorize the install. From there, go to the network section that can be found in System Preferences. From there, select the checkbox at the bottom to show VPN status within the menu bar. Doing this will allow you to quickly turn your VPN on or off, as well as giving you a glimpse of your VPN status whenever it's in use. At this point, we're going to attempt to connect to our VPN server, but before doing so, you may or may not run into the following issue. In addition to opening UDP ports 4500 and 500 on your router, if your router supports what's called VPN pass-through, and if it's enabled, then you should be able to connect. Otherwise, if your router does not support VPN pass-through, then my suggestion is that you attempt to connect to your VPN from a network other than your home network. Now, as you can see, I was able to establish a connection which shows the status, the connection time, as well as the virtual IP address assigned to my device by the VPN server. As for Connect On Demand, which we implemented just before installing the VPN profile, enabling it is a simple matter of clicking the lock in the corner of the window and selecting the chat box. This is a useful feature in that, once enabled, any attempts to establish a network connection or data transmission will only take place after a VPN connection has been established. And because the profile we're using is based on IKE v2, VPN connections and reconnections will be handled in a more graceful manner when traversing the city from network to network. And with that, let's transition over to the configuration process for the iPhone. The setup process for the iPhone or any iOS device is straightforward. Once you've transferred the config file as well as the strongswancert.pem file, either through AirDrop or by emailing the files to yourself to be retrieved by your iOS device, follow the on-screen prompts to complete the installation. And with that, we've reached the end of part 2 of this video on how to configure and install a VPN profile on Apple devices. In part 3, I'll attempt to show you guys how to set up IKE v2 connections for Android devices as well as Windows devices. With that said, I want to take this time to thank you guys for watching this video. And before you go, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one and leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know if you guys found my tutorial helpful or if you're stuck somewhere so I can help you as best as I can. This is TBT and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.